Hi, so today I want to talk about this idea that a highly automated society will make us impotent in the sense that if artificial intelligence and automated systems are doing all the work for us, then human beings will just be left to rot, uh, like in that movie Wally, where everyone's just overweight and no one moves because machines and artificial intelligence will do everything for us. And so that's a legitimate fear. And, and uh, for a little while back, I didn't really think that anyone actually truly believes that. Uh, I, I think this argument is born purely from a lack of imagination and in this video I will try to explain a bit more why. So the way that I understand the argument is that, you know, just as I explained, that once we have high enough automation and artificial intelligence systems, then what will human beings do? Essentially the argument being that the point of human life is to work and I understand it in a way where people make the argument that, you know, uh, work in a broader sense and definition that you know work in the community the people wanting to help their community advance you know teach children you know be support persons uh, teachers uh you know do good in the community i absolutely understand that and if we count that as work uh, then in in some ways i agree and i don't think that any human being will be sort of uh denied the chance that if they want to help their community that they couldn't. Uh, it's just that more and more jobs will lose meaning in the sense that more and more jobs lose the requirement of even having any people at all. Uh, so why I think that this is not a legitimate fear, like why I think that. So essentially more and more is being done by machines and human beings will be sort of left to the sidelines, uh, you know, sort of being like, what can we do? We can't do anything. And uh, this is the world that people imagine. I think one of the things we're thinking about the future is that we need to take into consideration all possible aspects and just as a sort of uh, footnote uh, a side sort of rant is that it always makes me sad when i see a brilliant scientist and uh, when they're biased and too close-minded in their own way of thinking that a biologist is biased to think as a biologist a programmer is biased to think like a programmer uh, a psychologist is biased to think like a psychiatrist uh, you know astrophysicist thinks like an astrophysicist and i think we mo need more unity between all of these fields together uh, I don't think any of them can work in isolation and I think that's why many mistakes are being made with predictions of the future is because people who make those predictions uh, make those predictions from their own very per particular lens of looking at the future uh, discounting other possible factors that will come in in the way that we see in technology that more and more fields emerge you know biology uh, programming used to be separate now it's biotechnology, you know, more and more fields merge and everyone is becoming, everything is becoming information technology. Uh, so it makes me sad to see people being uh, constricted, uh, restrained, uh, you know, just by the way that they have been conditioned to think and solve problems. You know, when you have a hammer, all your problems look like nails. Uh, that's pretty much what it boils down to. And it's, it's difficult uh, to sort of explain this to people because you know if you spend like 20 years thinking in a particular kind of way and you had some success as well uh, and other people confirming your way of thinking then you know it takes a lot of um, courage and effort and open open-mindedness to sort of admit and to be willing to sort of expand your mind that aha maybe you're leaving something important out uh, and in many situations when i see people talking about the future they they miss some really crucial aspects of the future so for me when i think about the future uh, I try to be really cautious and take into account you know before i make any step towards the future i try as much as my human brain is possible of doing, taking into account all the possible different considerations and events that might influence those things. And I think you understand what I'm trying to say. So I think what it boils down to is that people think that with the advancement of technology, automation, and artificial intelligence, people think that our technological society will advance only externally, not internally when it is a fact that when you look at the advancements of technology then 
equally as many breakthroughs are being made in biology, psychology, in, into changing our own DNA, into improving our own health, our mental health, you know, everything that it has to do with living organisms, you know, uh, we are also studying really deeper and deeper than ever before of understanding what is this human nature, how do we work, how can we work better, you know, uh, in the future, it will not be technology and people, you know, we begin to merge more and more as, you know, people who are more uh, open-minded and who look further. Uh, it is quite clear and obvious to see that we will merge with our technology. We will not be left alone in isolation. So that kind of world will not happen unless we really specifically try to avoid, you know, any sort of merging with technology, but it will happen. Uh, so it will not be AI and automation doing the work and then people, you know, uh, somewhere, you know, just living in villages and, you know, being taken care of uh, by all those things. I think we will merge. I mean, definitely. Um, as I said many times, you know, either we will see an amazing, wonderful future or uh, we will die uh, and all this humanity will disappear. We will not be separate from technology and from our advancements. I think another question that people ask is that so in the future where all of the jobs are being done by machines and artificial intelligence, what will human beings do? I would encourage you to look around, you know, in the recent decades and centuries and to think about the ways of connection, the ways of having fun, the ways of creating things in the world and interacting with the world and each other, uh, to think about those things only more and more possibilities of doing all of this, doing more things, having more fun, you know, having more meaningful impact on the world, only more. Uh, and, and I think people somehow think that it stops somewhere, you know, human beings are limited. We don't think in exponential terms, but in such a future, once we reach such a point, there will only be more and more things to do. Uh, so it is only by lack of imagination that people think that we will somehow be separate and then uh, looking at the world from the outside. And I think it's quite obvious that there are certain interests that uh, whose interests it is that people keep working and going to offices and doing the same thing we've been doing all the time. But within the next decade, we will see the world change drastically beyond anything ever before beyond the internet beyond smartphones uh, if we actually create artificial intelligence and such a world currently to us is unimaginable it will require a massive restructuring of how we do things and and how we think about being human being in the human civilization in the first place uh, everything will fundamentally change the need for work will go away i think you know, genuinely, I think that it is a tragedy uh, that people waste their lives doing things that they are not passionate about. I think of how many brilliant people there must be who are stuck cleaning bathrooms or mopping the floors somewhere, where if they only had the freedom and time, they could, you know, advance our species further into the future. If they only had the encouragement, the support and the tools to do it, how many people are being held back by this system of <laughs> capitalism where, you know, it is only for such a small minority of people where all of the wealth is being funneled upwards, you know, where you are exploited as a worker, you know, for your profit that you generate to go to some other person, you know, who never even created the profit that you created. Um, but that's another topic. My brain sort of falls apart and explodes sometimes when I think about capitalism. I, you know, it needs to be another video. You know, I need to sort of um, hold myself back from uh, from making this video about criticism of capitalism. But you know, why couldn't it be? You know, we can do whatever we want. We are free human beings. Do we have free will? No, we do not. Free will is an illusion. Uh, by definition, no being in our universe could have free will because the definition of free will is an agent's ability to make choices free of any constraints. Now, the last part is important, making choices free of any constraints. And when you think for a moment, our entire existence 
is only within constraints. From the moment we are conceived, when we are the belly of mo our mothers, you know, we choose none of that. Yet all of those things choose and mold us into the future to who we are right now. We can take credit for nothing, if we're being absolutely honest, but we can ch still enjoy what we are. And I think the most important thing is not free will or choices. Most important thing is our conscious experience that we somehow manage to draw happiness from our existence and to sort of spread it around as much as we can and to lift up the consciousness of as many people around us as we can. What were we even talking about? We were talking about the future with automation and artificial intelligence. We will not be separate. We will merge with artificial intelligence and automation will be a seamless part of our lives. It can either be a violent, violent revolution, uprising, whatever happens, uh, you know, massive unemployment and strikes, you know, if we don't act on time to give everybody universal basic income, universal ba basic income, universal basic income coming from automation and artificial intelligence that can literally produce and generate orders of magnitude, tens, hundreds of times more than we can do with our human muscles and our human brains. These things can generate so much more value and we can use that value to pay ourselves and it is so difficult to imagine with our current capitalistic system, but um, you know, when we can produce so much abundance that we no longer need to starve or suffer or go to work in the first place, you know, I dream of a world where we have, you know, none of the technology of 3D replicators where we can just put in a bunch of dirt and rocks and out comes a smartphone or hamburger or whatever you want. That is possible in our world and in our future. Uh, things are changing quickly. I only have hope. I hope that this at least, you know, gave some idea of at least the opinion that uh, I have developed that it's it's a silly thing to worry about. You know, uh, it is a legitimate worry of, you know, how we will manage that transi transition from human beings having to work from human beings not having to work, you know, but saying that, you know, only work gives meaning to people's life, that's stupidity. I know that 90% of young people would not be lost and confused if they lost their job, if they got universal basic income, if they got security, if they got food, place to live. You know, they wouldn't be lost, like, what am I doing? No, they would figure things out, they would create art, they would go help people, they would organize events, they would connect with other people, they would make music, they would make mathematics, they would imagine new things, inventions in the world, you know. We will not be lost without our mundane jobs for sucking the life out of us and giving profit to some greedy bastards, you know. Work does not give meaning to life, you know. <laughs> it's so funny that I have to say it and and to most of you you know that's something that doesn't need to be said we will always have things to do if we want things to do and um, if we do things well then we can have an amazing future together and I really look forward to the next decade two decades uh, what will happen crazy things are happening as they are right now but I have hope in humanity because so far the only reason we have advanced so far is because there is more good in the world than bad. If there was more bad than good in the world then we wouldn't be here right now. We would have killed ourselves. So there has to be more good than bad. And I put my faith in that good, you know, that hopefully I can make some minuscule positive impact on the world which somehow replicates out into the world and then you could do it, hopefully, you know, and that we have hope for the future and the way that we speak and interact with the world and other people, that also influences our future and our civilization. So, you know, let's do the best we can. And uh, I am excited for the future. We either die or live in a utopia, in the good sense of the word, word utopia, in an actually pleasant world. Uh, there's so much to unpack and speak about everything but uh, yeah these are just some of my thoughts on this i hope there was something interesting in this video for you if you have any thoughts please share them in the comments and of course thank you so much for watching and take care